Creatures of the night. Drinkers of blood. Scourge of the living. Vampires. From Dracula to Twilight, vampires have been a pervasive part of our pop culture for decades and a part of folklore for centuries beyond that. From campfire stories to novels, films, comics, and more, vampires are a staple of the horror genre and have appeared in countless pieces of fiction. Although the image and common traits of vampires have varied and evolved over the years, it's hard to find someone that isn't familiar with at least the usual themes. In this video, I'll attempt to cover the history of vampires from the earliest mythological bases into the modern era of literature and cinema. It is startling to see just how many ancient civilizations possessed folklore of some sort of creature akin to a vampire, from the Persians to the Jews and the Egyptians. The myths surrounding these creatures varied wildly, of course, with some also having traits in common with other horrific creatures, like zombies, but the theme of an undead monster or a spirit drinking the blood of the living pervaded many different cultures. Some of the myths mention the creature preferring to drink the blood of newborns, or of pregnant women, and other myths mention the ability for the creature to change its shape in order to attract or charm their victims. It would be exhaustive to go over all of these myths in details, so instead I'll focus on the European myths that form the main basis for our modern image of a vampire. In Albanian folklore, the Striga was a vampiric witch that would drain the blood of infants at night before transforming into an insect and flying away. At least several methods of protecting oneself from a striga existed, including leaving a cross made from pig bones at the entrance of a church on Easter Sunday. In Iceland, they had the myth of the Draugr, an undead creature that retained a physical body and either remained near their burial place to protect their treasures from thieves, or roamed the earth to harass and kill the living, turning them into more Draugr. If a corpse was suspected to be a Draugr, they would often be decapitated or staked down in their grave to pin them in place. In more modern Greek folklore, there are the Vrikolakas, which despite actually meaning werewolves, have more in common with vampires. Like many of these myths, these creatures would have bloated and swollen forms with a purplish complexion. It was believed that one could become a Vrikolakas after death due to a sacrilegious way of life, a burial in unconsecrated ground, excommunication from a church, and other unholy acts. Superstition led to many corpses being handled in a way to avoid the possibility of them returning as avrikolakas, including burning the corpse upside down, severing the tendons of the knees, beheading, and impaling. Of course, Romania had many myths related to vampirism, such as the Moroi and the Strigoi, the Moroi were thought of as a lesser, or weaker form of a Strigoi, but were still dead monsters that rose from the grave to sap energy from the living. Little information is known about the folklore of the Moroi, overshadowed by the more popular Strigoi. Many of the common traits that we associate with vampires can be seen in the Strigoi myths, including blood sucking, supernatural abilities such as super strength, speed, senses, and shape shifting and the concept of putting a stake through their heart to kill them. It was believed that a person could become a Strigoi, either in life or in death, through a number of means, including living a life of sin, committing suicide without being married, being cursed by a witch, or by being the seventh child of the same sex in a family. Red hair was often seen as a bad sign, and superstition was rampant in the region. In fact, superstition and fear were so widespread throughout parts of Europe during the 18th century that a mass hysteria over vampirism broke out as a frenzy of alleged vampire sightings and attacks were recorded. Many graves were dug up during this time so that the corpses could be examined or staked down, and despite many scholars vehemently reporting that vampires did not exist, there were some that supported the discussion. The controversy finally stopped when the Empress of Austria sent her personal physician to investigate the situation, leading to her banning the practice of opening graves and desecrating corpses, with other countries following. 
Despite this, of course, superstition continued to exist regarding vampires. And that brings us to the most influential piece of vampiric literature in history, Dracula, and its writer Bram Stoker. The novel was published in 1897, and invasion literature was highly popular among fans of British fiction, which was the concept of Britain being invaded by outside forces, often fantastical. Stoker spent seven years researching stories and folklore related to vampires throughout Europe, incorporating various myths into his concept of a vampire, but also took inspiration from his friend, actor Sir Henry Irving, to give Dracula a gentlemanly flair. Some believe that Stoker based Dracula on Vlad III, also known as Vlad the Impaler, a ruler of the Wallachia region of Romania during the 1400s. Vlad was known for his brutal punishments and a reputation for cruelty, including reportedly impaling thousands of men, women, and children for his enemies to see. Vlad II, his father, joined a Christian organization during his life known as the Order of the Dragon, and took on the title of Dracul, meaning the dragon. His sons then became known as Dracula, or Son of the Dragon. Stoker took the name Dracula for his book, but apparently knew little about Vlad III, and it's unlikely he based the character off of him, although there are similarities. Count Dracula from the novel, of course, exhibits many of the traits that we associate with classic vampires, including shape-shifting into bats, wolves, or mist, the strength of 20 men, has no reflection in a mirror and casts no shadow, has powerful hypnotic abilities, is largely immortal, and possesses weaknesses to sunlight, garlic, religious symbols, and running water. Of course, Dracula also possesses the ability to bite an individual in order to turn them also into a vampire, albeit one largely under his control. The location of Count Dracula's castle in Transylvania forever linked the region with vampirism in modern fiction. The book was not a massive success upon release, but was praised by critics at the time, and Stoker died a poor man. Although Dracula was not the first novel to feature vampires, it would go on to become the most well-known, largely due to cinema. Dracula has been featured in more films than almost any other character, except for Sherlock Holmes, and this began in 1922 with a silent film known as Nosferatu, directed by F. W. Murnau. Nosferatu was a German production, and changed the setting of London from the novel to Germany, among other changes. Due to the company not able to get the film rights, they changed Dracula's name to Count Orlock, and adjusted other elements of the plot and character names. Despite these changes, Stoker's widow sued the company for copyright infringement and won the case, bankrupting the company. The court ordered the destruction of all copies of Nosferatu, but some survived the process, allowing the film to become a legend of horror cinema. Even more well-known than Nosferatu, however, was the official 1931 production of Dracula, based on a stage play from 1924 that adapted the novel. This time, the production legally obtained the film rights from the Stoker estate and set out to capitalize on the highly successful Broadway play. Hungarian actor Bela Lugosi was finally cast as Count Dracula, although he was not Universal Studios' first choice for the role. Lugosi had already been performing the role of Dracula for the play to critical acclaim, and he lobbied hard and took a low paycheck in order to win the role. The production was allegedly disorganized, but proved mostly a critical success due to the creepy atmosphere and Lugosi's acting. At the box office, it was a massive success among audiences, and kickstarted a golden age of early horror movies, including Frankenstein, The Mummy, and The Wolfman. Bela Lugosi's Dracula became the definitive vampire. Although fascination with vampires would eventually fade away for a time, it would come back in 1958 with the first colorized Dracula film, also titled Dracula, produced by Hammer Films and starring Christopher Lee. A number of sequels would be made, along with many other classic horror films, and Lee would become well known for his portrayal of Count Dracula and the imagery of a vampire burying its fangs on screen. 
a number of Vampire and Dracula-related films would follow in the decades afterwards, notably the 1992 release of Bram Stoker's Dracula, a critical and box office success. Vampires would also begin to appear in more varied contexts within films, examples including Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Lost Boys, and Interview with the Vampire. Outside of films, vampires would also begin to make appearances in many of the new mediums of fiction, such as comic books, video games, and anime. The Marvel Comics character Blade first appeared in the 70s as a half-vampire, half-human vampire hunter. This concept, known as a dampier, appeared in some European folklore and would be featured in a number of fictional works. The first video game about vampires, The Count, was released in 1981. A text adventure game, The Count had the player being sent to kill Count Dracula in his castle in Transylvania. Arguably the most famous video game series regarding vampires, Castlevania, was first introduced in 1986. More than 30 games have been released in the Castlevania series, generally involving a family of vampire hunters, known as the Belmonts, hunting down Dracula. The games also feature a number of other horror tropes and creatures, including werewolves and Frankenstein's monster. Vampire the Masquerade, a tabletop role-playing game, would also introduce a lot of new concepts to the vampire genre. Within the setting of the game, Cain, from the biblical account of Cain and Abel, became the first vampire after he was cursed by God. The modern vampires within the setting believe themselves to be descended from Cain, and some wait for his return so that they may be judged by him in an event known as Gehenna. Much of the game's mythology and setting revolve around religion and belief. These are only a few of the countless works of fiction related to Dracula and vampires that have been released over the years. Few creatures of the night have captured our imagination like vampires. From ancient myths and folklore that led to hysteria and panic, through the modern eras of fantastical literature and gruesome horror cinema, vampires have managed to stay a topic of conversation for centuries. Today, vampires in fictional works come in many different varieties, ranging from the Stoker-esque gentleman vampire to something far more savage and primordial. While the days of digging up graves to stake down corpses may be behind us, the mysteries of the undead will continue to fascinate the living.